if we find sugar, corn, or soy in the top three ingredients, then we just put it back because we don't. Or in there at all. Well, if we find that at all, we'll put it down. But most people, like we would recommend, if you're kind of just starting out reading labels, then pay attention to the top three because those would have the most in there. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. We're coming at you with a brand new show. We appreciate whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. We are talking today about reading ingredients. So we wanted to jump on and talk to you guys about how or how to read labels or <laughs> our top tips of foods to stay away from because it's very deceiving in, pa- in packaging. They can hide certain things like um, GMOs and MSG under different terms. So we wanted to talk about that and go into detail about that this morning. Yeah. Well, I think for us, uh, the best place to start, I would say, if you don't mind me jumping in oh, here, jump Jordan, right in, Drew. <laughs> is the re- reading ingredients and the importance of reading ingredients. So most people feel that if you read the food label, or what do they call that? Thing? Nutrition. Nutritional label. Right. But where it says the calories and it says how many carbs, how many proteins, how many yeah. sugars, how many of this and that. You should rename that the nonsense label. The nonsense label. Because <laughs> it means nothing. And we'll get into that. So that nutrition label, a lot of times people think that that's informative. <laughs> but it's really it's, not. But it's, it's because that's what we're taught to read. It's right? true. That's yeah. why. It's not when I say that, I don't mean that... Um, Degrading or pointing fingers. Pointing fingers, like <laughs> we like we were taught that. Just like like calories, it's all mark. It's all marketing. Like the things that we are taught. Like for example, when gluten came out, we'll get into that as well. Like when gluten came out, everyone was like, "Oh, stay away from gluten." So now they actually put gluten free on labels on products that have nothing to do with gluten. with gluten. There's no possible way it would have gluten in it, but they put it on there because they know people are specifically looking for food labels that say gluten free. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's why we have to understand that when we're looking at labels, we have to look at the ingredients and not the nutritional label. The nutritional label isn't really going to tell you much and it's very deceiving. It would probably be more detrimental to read the nutritional label than than to not read at all yeah when i was first getting into my nutrition journey years ago i was attending lots of workshops and in in lots of classes and this one class that i attended or workshop that i attended the instructor said that compared a package of coconut oil or a, a, a nutrition label of coconut oil to a cheeseburger and it was like the nutrition label <laughs> like calories fats all of that was pre- was just about the same so like a serving of coconut oil to a cheeseburger but the nutritional the actual ingredients of course the cheeseburger had 5,000 ingredients <laughs> and the coconut oil just has coconut oil and then the value that you're putting of the nutrients you're putting in your body doesn't even compare right now what co- the coconut oil is going to give you energy it's going to process in your body it's in all of these wonderful things and then the cheeseburger is going to have you running to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> holding your stomach <laughs> yeah well we- yeah. I mean, they're they're so different. They're, they're completely different. And, and when we talk about whole foods, like you took co- coconut and like Coke, for example, like we actually had someone that was sitting in front of us, didn't know exactly what we did, we didn't know our profession, and they were talking about a Coke, like coconut water and Coke. A cola, and they were like, "There's way more calories in the coconut water. I'm going to drink the Coke." Well, it, it was a diet diet pop, right? Okay. It, was, it was a diet pop, so. The the label on a diet pop 
the nutritional label is like no, nothing, like all zeros, right? Zero calories, zero fat, zero sugars, zero this. But of course, the coconut water has calories and it has healthy fats. So, <laughs> so that. It has, but it has one ingredient. But it has one ingredient, yes. And then look at the ingredients, all the ingredients that Coke has, and then the type of ingredients. Mm -hmm. So it's very challenging to be like, oh, the nutritional label is something that we go to to find out if a food is healthy or not. Mm -hmm. So for uh, for us, our standpoint when it comes to reading labels is is reading the ingredients and not the nutritional label. And the other thing is is we feel that you should be able to read, pronounce, and spell everything that you put in your body. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's something, if you're if you flip a container around and it and you can't read the ingredients, then you shouldn't be consuming it because nine times out of ten, it's going to be a chemical that our body can't recognize, utilize, or absorb. So that's the very basics when we talk about reading labels. And it's so easy. I think that we should put that on a t-shirt and make everyone wear them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have a fun story. We were, this was a, a couple of years ago, but we were at the grocery store and there was a young girl um, trying to convince her mom that, that well, what, what do you call that? Um, her mom, she was trying to convince her mom to buy the, to, to bag, buy the bag of cookies. Bag of cookies. And her mom her mom said no, and, and but the but the little girl she persisted and was whining and begging. And the mom says, "You know what? If you can read every <laughs> ingredient on that cookie box, then you can buy it. If you can read and pronounce every ingredient on the box, then you can have the cookies." And then the little girl just kind of goes, puts her head down, and like, huh? "I lost." <laughs> that was the end. <laughs> that was the end. That's the end of the conversation. I wanted to like run over there and hug the mom. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, somebody gets it. <laughs> but this is kind of cool. But the girl, we always remember that story because that's how we feel. But that little girl was like, well, mom lets me, or dad lets me have the cookies. And then the mom was all frustrated. And she finally said, fine, read the, read those ingredients and I'll let you buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how, I think that's really how we should teach our our children and we should teach ourselves the same because if we can't read ingredients, we can't spell or pronounce, it's pretty simple. It's going to be a chemical that our body can't, utilize. Mm -hmm. And the problem with putting those types of substances in our body is that our body doesn't turn into energy. So our bodies are meant to put food and nutrients and ingredients in our body that can be turned into energy. That's why we eat. That was the main purpose way back when, when there was, when we were eating food for survival. Now we eat for food for a number of different ways because it looks good. It tastes good because entertainment of is a big one. Entertainment purposes, emotional purposes. There's a lot of a lot of us are emotional eaters, for example. So <laughs> that beauty. <you, don't> <laughs> yeah, I've gotten a lot of a lot better, I, I would say, um, but definitely emotional eater. So that's the reason why we're supposed to eat food is because it turns into energy. Our body needs food for energy. And that's the challenge when we t see people that say we start working with them and they eat once a day or twice mm -hmm. a day. And, and then they say, I don't have any energy. Well, of course you don't have energy. It's just, it's just normal. It's on, it's very clear. There's no energy there because you need food for energy. If there's no food, there's no energy. <laughs> that's right. So that's why one of the big turning points when we talk to people and help them understand eating smaller meals, clean food will help you increase your metabolism, increase your energy, help you burn body fat. And then that's why one of the first things people say when they start working with us or they start using complete with protein, for example. Wow, is, I can't believe how much energy I have. Okay? That's right. Yeah. It's one of the very first things when people start eating on a regular basis and, and eating their snack meals. And, um, you know, like you said, using complete truth protein. Only, and, and the thing is, is that complete truth protein has very simple ingredients. Like you can read them, you can pronounce them. That's what we stand behind. That's why we developed it in that regard is because you need to have clean products that are simple. And when you put those part, you put those clean ingredients or clean products in your body, it's very apparent that you have instant energy so that's why we that's why we teach what we do so what's next why well, just what, what did i say you were talking about reading the the ingredients as opposed to the nutritional label mm -hmm. right and then the reason why mm -hmm. is because we need to turn that into energy that's right so a lot of times um the, the, the next step is knowing, I, get, I suppose, what to look for on the ingredient list because, or what to, what to stay away from. So when we look at the ingredients in a product, we want, I mean, of course, it would be the, the best to have one ingredient. 
So when we look at things like peanut butter, for example, peanut butter should have one ingredient, <laughs> just peanuts. And it would be ideal if all packaged foods had one ingredient, but um, that's that's just not, not the case. But Drew and I ourselves have a five ingredient max. If we look at a label and there's more than five ingredients or there's a big long list of ingredients, we don't even bother with it. We just put a bag on the shelf. <laughs> well, that's it's interesting because I, I want to mention that many times we start working with someone and they're like, we talk, we talk about reading the ingredients and understanding what you're putting in your body. And they say, well, it takes so long to go to the grocery store because I have to take the time to read everything I pick up. And we're like, yes, <laughs> you do. And, but because that's important, we have to understand what we're putting in our body. But the more you, the more you do that, the easier it gets because you start to know what name brands you're going to pick up and put in your cart. So you'll know in a certain name brand and you just grab it. Like you've been doing that with dairy free yogurt, for example. Mm -hmm. Like that's a newer type of product that we've been having yes. here. Yes. And then, so it's easy. You just go to the section, you know, the section you grab it, you throw it in the cart. Yeah. But it didn't start that way. <laughs> Yeah. Because when I first started looking into dairy free yogurts, I had to spend the time and do the research and read every single one. And it's surprising because those labels like, oh, dairy free, we think, oh, it's dairy free, it's healthy. But it's surprising what they can pack into a dairy free yogurt, for example. But now that I've gotten used to, it took a few times to go to the grocery store and, and find the right ones and remember which ones. And we tried a couple of different ones without, before we found one we liked. But now, like you said, you just go and you grab the one you know. So, But I guess, so what I was saying is that it gets easier. So you'll know, like Dorothy will know what section, if she wants that dairy-free yogurt, for example, you know what section to go to. And you don't, so you're not walking up and down every aisle. And you, we know that when we travel, like it's challenging at a grocery store because you're always looking where certain things are. And we're like, where is everything? So it takes some time and effort to find them. Then the next time you go back and you're like, where was that again? Yeah. But if you keep going to the same grocery store or, or, or you go to a few different grocery stores, you'll start to get the hang of it and you'll know where things is. So you won't go down the uh, laundry, laundry aisle, for example, or the chip aisle, for example. And, um, so that's good. The majority of your time at the grocery store should be spent in the produce section anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And we like to say buy products that is the ingredient instead of that has the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So a cucumber, it is the ingredient. Or like uh, bananas, it is the ingredient. It doesn't have ingredients. So that's, right. that's a good rule of thumb as well. But I want to mention that I was getting at is that it, it gets easier. So we'll look at the back of a container and it will, and if it has a, a like a list of ingredients this long, we'll just put it back. Like we don't sit there and read them no, because it'll take forever. So we look at the list of ingredients and if it has, a, like Dorothy was saying, five or six, if it has a bunch more ingredients, we just put it back. We don't read it. We just carry on like, oh, no thanks. Yeah. And move on. So that makes it a bit uh, quicker as well. Yeah. And another thing about, that's interesting about the ingredient list is the order of the ingredients goes from what is in the package the most to, to the least. So for example... Whatever the first ingredient is, that is what has the most in that package. So if you're, for example, one of the things that you always, always, always look for is sugar, refined sugar and cane sugar in, in a product because um, we don't want to consume <laughs> those low quality kinds of sugars. And a lot of times sugar is like the first or second or third ingredient, which means that Primarily, it's made up of sugar because <laughs> it's one of the first few ingredients. That's right. So that was, <coughs> wow, nothing was coming out there. Can you explain how the first ingredient has the most, then the second has the least? Mm -hmm. That's what we just talked about. No, I mean, <laughs> didn't go into detail about it. So the first ingredient is the most. That they're labeled in order from most to least. So if sugar is the first ingredient, then it's going to have the most, that's going to be what's the most in your product. The second ingredient has the second most and the third ingredient has the th uh, is the third most. That's right. <laughs> and so on. So the, 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 the further it goes down the line, the less of it, less of that ingredient they have in the product. So that's why a lot of times you hear people say the top three, like the sh is sugar in the top three. I hear that all the time. Like if sugar's in the top three, then you put it back. And that's the easy one for us. Like if we find sugar, corn or soy, in the top three, then we just put it back because we don't. Or in there at all. Well, 
if we find that at all, we'll put it down. But most people, like we would recommend if you're kind of just starting out reading labels or reading ingredients, then pay attention to the top three because those would have the most in there. Mm -hmm. So if you have a packaged food and the first ingredient is sugar or the first or second ingredient has sugar, then that is your that product you're purchasing is mainly comprised of sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say for me, it was cereal. Like cereal aisle is like just a nightmare. <laughs> And that's why we have, uh, we don't buy cereal anymore. We <laughs> make our own because it's just a nightmare to buy your own cereal. They put um, sugar in it and I don't know. Even the healthier ones that are the healthier <laughs> cereals have cane sugar in it. And it's like, <laughs> stop putting sugar in everything. <laughs> and I think that cane sugar, like they changed, they changed refined sugar or just sugar to cane sugar. So I thought a lot, of, I think a lot of times people are like, oh, it's cleaner or healthier. But cane sugar isn't all that fantastic for you. They actually have like, if you go down the baking aisle, they'll have like big giant bags of it. Like big, like white. Uh, refined sugar? No, refined cane sugar. Oh, yeah. And it's like, they just changed the name. So that's not a sugar that you'd be looking for. And it, and I would go back to saying like the grocery industry is built around deception, unfortunately. So like the labels are very loosely mon controlled, controlled monitored. monitored. And they, they put like crazy things on labels. Like what are some of them? We, Dorothy and I were talking about some of the ones that are that kind of stand out that's and cool like, they'll put like low like the the labels that that get us you know low or free fat free or low sugar or low sodium low sodium is one right low sodium's a big one. Right? and you see that a lot of times on like the soup packages low sodium and then we're like oh this must be healthier because it says low sodium but the packaged soups are full of crazy unhealthy ingredients <laughs> right and then but that's the thing that's why we have to read ingredients because they put these labels on like louise or, just said earlier she's like a bottle a bottle of water says gluten free i mean like, that has nothing to do with gluten there'd be no way there would be gluten in there but people are just looking for these keywords and the grocery industry knows that they mm -hmm. spend millions of dollars marketing with their with their marketing dollars to know what people are looking for so they know that people are looking for a tag that says gluten free so they'll go grab that water instead of water that doesn't have that on there a big one is um, all natural, right? They label all natural because it makes your brain think that, oh, it's a natural product, right? Then you look on the ingredient list and you're like, what the heck is natural about this? Oh my gosh. Remember we looking at those cookies? There are these cookies that was like, they're called digestive cookies. Oh, that's, a, yes. And I think it's a thing, but it's a, it's a name brand. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, a name, name brand. brand. So that's how they get around that. Like it's a name, it's a name brand. It's not a label. It's not a food label. It doesn't say improve digestion. It says digestive cookies. And then you look at the back. Dorothy actually picked it up at the start. She's like, oh, I wonder what's in there. She's like, how are these going to improve your digestion? <laughs> there was a horrible amount of ingredients and in like things that we know are will be harmful to your to your digestion like soy products and msg and it was in oh, the really? dig oils like hydrogenated oils in these digestive cookies and i was like how's that gonna improve your digestion but we got a good chuckle out of that <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so we want to get into some of the things that we want to stay we want you to stay away from <laughs> <laughs> That we recommend staying away from. So we have a, a short list here that we want to go through. So I think the easiest way is to um, tell you the three, like the top three, and then to break down each one. Sure. Right? Yeah. Is that, do you agree? Uh, <laughs> you're running the show. That's oh, okay. Goodbye, Drew. <laughs> no. um, so number one for us is refined sugar. So to stay away from sugar, sugar and products. Um do you want to say one too? No, I want to explain. Okay. I want to explain them. Do you, are you going to read all of them and then explain? I'm just going to read the top, the top three and then we'll break them down. Okay. Um, so refined sugar, G GMO, so genetically modified uh, foods, and then MSG. And MSG has a crazy name, monosodium glutamate or something like that. So those would be our top three 
to stay away from. And we're going to break down each one for you so you know exactly what to look for because it's not going to be in the ingredient list GMO or <laughs> MSG. They hide these ingredients on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> they hide it under different names that makes it look better. So we're going to break down each one for you. That's right. So the first one is sugar. I think that's probably a no-brainer. Sugar is in everything, which is so challenging. And sugar is detrimental to our health. So it actually, I mean, we're highly addicted to sugar as a society. And if you look at like addiction, you could look at something that is a drug. And I think a lot of times when I say sugar is a drug, people are like, I am not an addict. (laughs) But we are. (laughs) We are, as a as a culture, as a society, addicted to sugar. <laughs> so it's true, though. Like, if we look at a definition of a drug, we look at something that's highly addictive, detrimental to our health, and something that's very challenging to get off of. Mm. And if if we if any of us have tried to go, like, sugar-free for a while, we know that, like, we go through with sugar withdrawals. Like, we have headaches. We have emotional issues. We have mood issues. And our body is like, what are you doing to me? You give me sugar every day. And now I have none. So that's how we can tell that something is a drug because this, these are things that happen when we get off it. These are things that happen while we're on it. So that'd be the first thing to understand that sugar is a drug and we need to stop putting sugar in our bodies and pay attention to f- more foods that have less sugar in them. Mm-hmm. And there are some sugars that are a bit less refined that you can, we talk about with healthy baking to transition yourself away from refined sugar, but you'll want to, like the refined sugars that we're talking about are, are like those white sugars that you find in the baking aisle. <laughs> and we talked about earlier about cane sugar. It's, um, I don't know how it's gotten to the point where now they're they're trying to disguise it, I suppose. They just like, changed the name. They just changed the name instead of putting refined sugar or sugar. They put cane sugar <laughs> in, in, in packaged foods. So try not to be, I suppose, deceived by that. Um, but there's some raw sugars like coconut sugar, for example, that would be a little less processed and might process a little differently in our bodies. So if you're looking to, you know, a, a baby step getting away from sugar or weaning yourself off of sugar, you that would be a little step you could take is to find a raw sugar. Um, and you'll know a raw sugar from uh, refined sugar because of its color. The raw or the raw sugars are going to be brown, um, and then the refined sugars, of course, are white. And then the size of the sugar, because the white refined sugars are so processed, they're really fine. But the raw sugars are tend to be tend to be a bit more chunky, chunky. Not so like it's not like sand. They're mm-hmm. like more granules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so those are like that's something that you can do to transition. But the other thing is is baking. Like that's why we talk about baking so much, and that's why Dorothy has her own show now, yeah. is because it's so important to to be like we can show you how to make healthy baking that tastes great and is healthy. So it's so challenging to explain to people like you can have this without feeling guilty because all the ingredients are clean. But for so many years, we're used to having refined sugar, adding extra sugar into baking products. So we're like, oh, well, we know that's bad for us. So we have to stay away from it just because it's baking. Mm-hmm. And you don't have, like, it doesn't have to be that way. You can make baking, and that's why Dorothy shows you these things. You can have baking products that taste great and don't have the sugar. So some of the things that the sugars that you use instead? Well, um, the, instead of sugar, we would use honey or a maple syrup. Would be our would be our top two choices. Yeah. Our maple syrup. They also use stevia. I'm getting more into using stevia now than than I have in the past because um, a while ago they're just coming up with better and better stevia, I guess. Um, now, so I made muffins this this for this week with stevia, and they turned out really really good. So. Jesse will share that on her. She usually shares those on her page. So yeah, I share recipes on my on my personal page. So go on over to to my personal page, and there you go find a bunch of recipes there. <laughs> That's a good point. Sometimes we have lots of people that have been following us for a while and haven't liked our page. So if you get a chance, like our True Form page if you haven't, because then you can um, then you can follow along and you, you'll get better notified. 
we have we, we, like Facebook pages get such a small percent of exposure. So by liking a page and then commenting, hitting the like button, that will get our posts to show up in your newsfeed more often. If you don't do that, then it's just Facebook says, well, they're not really interested in these posts. So they show them less and less. Mm-hmm. So that would definitely help us out. Uh, and the next one was GMO. So soy is one of the top GMO, like genetically modified foods. So that's one that you'll you'll want to look for when you're reading ingredients because they disguise the GMO as, as, as soy. So, for example, they're not going to say on the ingredient list, GMO, <laughs> it's going to say soy. And soy lithocin is a big one. So you'll see soy lithocin in a lot of different things. And I'm not exactly sure why the soy goes in everything. But oh, so, well, well, there's a lot of different reasons. But yeah. soy is much like corn. It's a cheap product. Yeah. It's easy. It's cheap to produce. And it's, they throw it in there as a filler. So they can extend their product longer. So it looks like there's more of it. It's like there's a lot of different cheap products that they throw in, but soy is a big one. So that's something that we recommend staying away from. Mm -hmm. And another one is um, corn. So you'll see corn in a lot of food packages, a lot of spices and and powder kind of foods. You'll see corn in there. Um, So that would be another one you'd want to you'd want to be like, oh, there's corn in that because it's disguising as GMO. That's right. So in Detoxify Yourself, you guys aren't aware, this is a book that I wrote uh, a few years ago, and I have a whole chapter that talks about GMOs, and for me, it was like so eye-opening when I started to learn about GMOs, and and we should mention that GMOs are controversial. One side says that they uh, grow crops quicker, they're um, resistance to pesticides or herbicides and they are cheaper to grow and for us those of us that believe that we shouldn't be consuming uh, GMOs is that they're detrimental to our health in many different ways there's no real long-term studies because they actually came out to the public in 1996 a lot of people like myself feel like foods should be labeled if something's a GMO it should say GMO and in this regard they're allowed to say pretty much anything they want around genetically modified foods like they don't have to say that it's it's a GMO. They can say it's a it's a soy product, it's a corn product, it's a uh, oil product that is genetically modified. And I feel strongly that we as consumers should know what's in our food. They should be clearly labeled, and we should be able to know that without having this long discussion. Discussion. Big companies spend millions of dollars into campaigns why they shouldn't label foods and i feel that they should spend more money educating the public on why they feel gmos are safe that would make a whole lot more sense to me but they again i would go back to saying that many much of the industry is based around deception and hiding things instead of being more open and public Mm -hmm. and msg products maybe the question could be what What's the name of MSG products? Like they're pretty challenging to pronounce and remember and read. So that's why we go back to the beginning when we first talked about we should be able to read, pronounce, and spell all of the ingredients in the things that we're buying. So if you can't pronounce something, there's a good chance that it's going to be chemical derived from or, or under the umbrella of something like an MSG or a GMO. So that's a it's a pretty easy rule of thumb to remember that way. So, and if you're unsure about the MSG, you and you consume something with MSG, you will know because you will be running to the bathroom quite soon after you eat MSG. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here, and have a great day. Bye, guys. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. You can always find us on Facebook.com slash True Form Life. We post stuff there a couple times a day on our story. We're always trying to bring you more content around living a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. We also have free challenges that we do at least once a month. So if you follow us along there, you'll be able to join maybe a plank challenge or a squat challenge, Tabata challenge, 
challenge, whatever it may be, we'd love to have you join us. We're also on Instagram.com slash Drew Tadia. Again, we're posting up there a couple times a day along with our story, all dedicated to keeping you fit and healthy and on track. Our main website is trueformlife.com. If you want to check out some of our products, some of our services, or if you just want some great content from videos to blog posts and recipes and more, we got all that at trueformlife.com. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.